On today's episode, we're going to be creating more of those DIYs that you keep asking me to make. And what is it? Button DIYs. So let's go use our button stash and get started. For this first project, we're going to use one of these frames from the Dollar Tree. I just took it out of the backing and we're going to cover it with some white uh, craft paper. This is just some scrapbooking paper, probably from Hobby Lobby in one of those big packs. So I just cut it down to fit to size, used some Elmer's glue that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I glued it to the front of the frame. I'm going to go ahead and put the frame back in before I do the project. That way I am making sure that I am not over the edge with these buttons. And we're going to start with these green buttons. So for this project, we're going to make a watermelon and we're just going to start with some darker green buttons on the outside for our rind. I'm just gonna go ahead and place them around where I think I might want them to go. I did not draw this project out. So this is one of those ones where you're just gonna kind of sit it there, make sure you like the way it looks and then go back and glue it. If you don't like that, you can go ahead and draw lightly on there with a pen or pencil and then just follow the outside of your line. So once we get our rind on there then I'm going to go ahead and go back in with hot glue and glue each of the buttons down. I wanted to make it a little bit more symmetrical so I spread out the rind just a little bit. Once I have those glued on, I'm going to go back in with some lighter green buttons. This is to do the other part of the rind, the inner part of the rind, I guess you would say. Once I get those all in in the way that I like, I'm going to go ahead and do the same process by hot gluing them down. I did decide to add one more smaller button up here at the top so that they are even. Once I get those all glued in, we're going to take our red buttons, and these are just various degrees of red buttons. There are also different sizes. I go ahead and lay them in. When I go to glue them down, they get a little bit messed up and so it's not quite the same design. I go ahead and lay some buttons over the top to fill in some of the gaps for this one. And then that is it for this super adorable project. I really love how this one turned out. I thought about adding a bow and then in the end decided I didn't want to put one there. Let me know down in the comments if you would have added a bow here. But that is it for this one. Let me know what you think about this cute watermelon. So for this project, we're going to make a card, and I kind of varied the projects in this one. In my first button video, I did some cards and some projects, and people really like that. So for this video, I'm going to do the same thing. So this is going to be a B card. There's a little doodling involved in this, and I'm going to just preface this by saying I am no artist. Definitely, that is not an ability that I was gifted with, but I do love to doodle, and I do really love how this turned out. So if you're afraid of doodling like me, give it a try. I mean, worst case scenario, no one sees it but you, and you didn't waste anything but maybe like a piece of cardstock and a couple buttons. So give it a try. Give your creativity a little bit of a boost here. Now, as you can see, these wings are a little rough as we start out, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is a scrapper of a project. But I did not give up, and I persevered through these sad wings. So like I said, do not give up. Keep going. Do those projects, you'll get better and better as you go along. So we're gonna add some little lines here on our wings. And then once we have our lines in, we're gonna go back into the body of our bee and we're gonna add the lines into the body of our bee. Once we get the lines in there, then we're gonna go ahead and fill those in because this is a bee body. Once we fill in the lines of our bee body, we're almost done with this project. And then we're going to add some little antennas to the top of our buttons. This gives it the character and it really brings these bees to life. Now on most of my cards that I did in today's projects, I did not add any sentiments here. You can add whatever you would like here. I think the one I might have seen online said, I'm so glad to be friends. But there's a lot of different things that you could add on the inside or the outside whatever fancies you but i love how these little bees turned out it's definitely my favorite card of the day so 
So these little frames from the Dollar Tree are definitely one of my more favorite things to craft with in the frame section over there. They come right out of the frame and you can cover whatever wording is there really easily. So that makes it a really easy project to um, customize and make your own. So I started out with brown paper here and it's the same process but I decided to use white paper instead. But all you're going to do is trace your paper to fit the insert of the frame and then go ahead and cut that out. You're going to use some glue of choice to glue it on there. I prefer a glue stick. I just didn't have any on hand, so I just used some Elmer's glue. It did make a little bit of a bubble there, but once I do the project, you can't tell it all. So we're going to go ahead and draw directly onto our paper here. We are making some dandelion stems here, and so this is definitely one of those doodle projects again where you're just going to make it until you like it. If you need a reference, you can definitely go online, look on Pinterest, or on Google and you will get some images to copy if you need to do that. So once I have drawn my image onto my paper, I kind of sorted out my buttons before I started this video, but you're going to pick some buttons that you like in the, uh, whatever color. You can do multiple colors if you wanted. I did one solid color for this project. And all we're going to do is take these tiny buttons and we're going to glue them to the ends of our dandelion stems. So this is absolutely adorable. I really love how this turned out. It's super simple. You can customize it to any colors. You can make this bigger. You could even do this on a canvas if you wanted and you can have multiple dandelions. There's just a lot of ideas for this project. I'm going to go ahead and add a butterfly sticker from the Dollar Tree up at the top and that is it for this super adorable project. Let me know what you think about this one. I know a lot of times when I'm making cards, I show pre-made cards that I pick up at Hobby Lobby, but if you don't have any pre-made cards, that is okay. You can create your own cards using cardstock. I have this cardstock on hand, so I just made a quick card out of it. And you can also pick up envelopes at the Dollar Tree, so you can make your own cards and you have your own envelopes and you don't have to buy those pre-packaged ones if you don't want to. So we're going to start this card using some big white buttons. We're going to be making a wedding card here. And so these are going to be our heads. There's some doodling involved in this card. Most of this card is doodling, um, but it turns out so adorable. So we're just going to start by drawing the body of the bride first, and then we're going to go ahead and draw the body of the groom. So these are stick people. They are really simple. I feel like anybody could create this card. If you are not feeling confident in your doodling skills, you could definitely sketch this out and then draw it again as you copy your sketch. Um, but this is super simple stick people. The last embellishment we need to add here is his top hat, and these two turned out so adorable. I am going to be using this as a wedding card this summer. I have a couple weddings to attend. You could add any sentiment you like on the outside or the inside. It's super customizable and adorable. Let me know what you guys think about this cute wedding couple. If you're into today's episode, I would love it if you went on down and hit that like button. And if you aren't subscribed yet and you're really loving today's content, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and become a part of my YouTube family.
For this project, we're gonna start out with this house frame. I got this at a garage sale. I got two of them for a dollar. I kind of think they might've came from the Dollar Tree or maybe Dollar General, just kind of looking at the frame insert. But we're gonna take the glass out and the frame insert out and we're gonna add a piece of paper here. I'm gonna be using a brown piece of paper and I'm just gonna glue it right to that insert. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my design here on the inside of my paper. Now we're going to be making a chicken. I think that this project needed to be on a bigger canvas, if I'm being honest, or I needed to have smaller buttons, one or the two. Now, I do think it turns out adorable, and I do really love how it goes together, but I definitely think this could have benefited from a bigger uh, size. But I thought that this house kind of looked like a barn, and so we're, since we're making a chicken, I thought that that would be adorable, like having the chicken inside the barn. So once I get it drawn on the paper, I'm just gonna take my buttons, and again, I'm just laying them out here. This is really beneficial because I did this twice. The first time I was using brown buttons, and when I put it around the shape, I really did not like how it turned out. So thank goodness I hadn't laid them down yet because that way I was just able to recreate this with different colored buttons. So once I get the white buttons all glued on, I'm gonna go ahead and add some black buttons down here for his feet, and I go ahead and do two rows of two, and then I do a long row of a few buttons just to show like maybe his taloned feet going across there. I do go ahead and add a darker brown button up towards the beak to give it a beak look and that is it for this project. I think it's adorable. It's a little abstract and I do think it looks super cute in this house barn type shape. Let me know what you guys think about this one. Could follow me on my other socials. I have Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and Facebook. All the links are down in my description box, so definitely stop on over and say hi to me over there. For this cute card, we're going to use some stickers that I had on hand. You can pick up flower stickers like a dime a dozen at Hobby Lobby and the Dollar Tree. So you're just going to pick up some flower stickers that you like. I'm just laying them in a group. I think of five is what I end up putting on here, and I just do various ones. So these are all different colored stickers and sizes, and so I just laid them on so that I can get five stickers on my card. Once I get my stickers on, all I'm going to do is take some buttons that I think go well with each sticker and I'm going to attach those buttons into the middle of our flowers. I also go ahead and add the leaves here around the flowers to make it a little bit more uh, like actual flowers and then that is it for this simple card. You can add any kind of embellishments that you like or you could add any sentiments that you like on the inside. This would make a really cute friend card or a summer card or a birthday card. So let me know what you guys think about this one.
that this project was inspired by my mom. She's a music teacher and recently redid her music room, and so I thought it would be fun to create some art for her walls. She created some other art with my son, and I thought that this would be a fun project to go along with it. So I, I went ahead and drew some music symbols onto these canvases. These are from the Dollar Tree. They're just the smaller canvases. And then once I got them all drawn out, I'm going to go ahead and take these black buttons, and I'm going to go around them on the lines to create this button art and these music symbols. Now I really love how this one turned out. This sign could have been a tiny bit bigger um, but all we're going to do is lay the buttons over the lines on our project and then that is it for this super cute project. Let me know what you think about this one. Now this card is going to be super simple. I'm using a yellow background card. You could use a yellow cardstock piece of paper. And all we're going to do is take varying shades of yellow buttons. We're going to create a circle first and then we're going to lay some buttons on top of that to add a layered effect. If you haven't figured out what it is yet, we're going to be making a sun. So once we get the center part of our sun, then we're going to go ahead and do the rays of our sun. I just did various colors. I didn't try to put them in any kind of um, order or anything like that. I just was trying to make it look like a rays of sunshine. I do have one heart button that I go ahead and lay in the middle of our circle just to give it a cute little added touch. And then that is really it for this project. Super simple. Anyone can make this and this would be a great one to make with kids or with your grandkids, and this is just one that you're going to lay on top of each other. Now, always be careful using hot glue. I have a super hot glue gun, so if you're using this with kids, make sure you have a lower temp glue gun, because those buttons can be pretty small when you're putting the glue on. But that is it for this super sunshine card. Let me know what you think about this one. Turn the tide Let the water go where it wants to go you can run and hide. So for this project we're going to take one of these frames from the Dollar Tree. It has like a 3D circle that sits on top of a patterned piece. We're going to take the pattern piece and cover it with some more wood barn looking scrapbook paper. I'm just using a glue stick here and then we're going to go ahead and attach that. We're going to take this circle piece that was like the 3D part on top and we're going to cover it with some white chalk paint. This is some Waverly chalk paint but any white chalk paint will do. I want to make sure that none of the wording is showing through. Then I cut out or I printed out this piece from my printer and then I cut it out into the circle and I'm just going to use a Mod Podge and attach it to the circle part. So this is something for Mother's Day but you could definitely use it for any day. This could be a good birthday gift as well. You can also make this saying be anything that you would like. It doesn't necessarily have to just be mom's but once I get it glued on to the middle I'm going to take some of my agave chalk paint and I'm just going to dry brush around the sides to give it a little bit of dimension. The agave paint matches the wood uh, grainy paper that I, I'm putting this on top of. I'm just going to very very lightly dry brush on top of the words as well and then we're going to add some hot glue to the back of our circle again and we're going to add it to our piece of wood <laughs> as they say that in quotation marks. Then we're going to take some buttons and we're just going to add it around the outside. The saying says moms are like buttons. They hold everything together. So you can add as many or as little buttons as you like here. But here it is. Style for you guys. Let me know what you think about this one. Somebody told me don't pretend
For this project, we're going to create a heart onto this card. Now, you could draw the heart out. I did not draw the heart out for this one. I just kind of put it in a shape that I liked. In a way, I kind of wish I had drawn the heart out because my heart becomes a little smashed, but it's still super adorable, so you decide either way if you feel like you need to draw it out. No shame in that, and it always gets covered up with the buttons anyway, so it just is a pattern. And if you're using or doing this with kids, patterns are a great thing because it really helps them stay to what it's supposed to look like. So once I get those all glued on in my heart shape, I'm just going to add this cute little bow at the bottom. I'm going to add a button on top of that. And then that is it for this one. You could add any sentiment you like on the inside or outside. But here it is. Let me know what you guys think about this one. This was a jam-packed episode of Button Crafts and DIYs. If you want some more inspiration, check out this button video next. And as always, wherever you are in your journey, it's a perfect place to start. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!